What's good, YouTube? Your boy Bosco back again with another sneaker review. And today we're talking about the Don Issue 5 in the throwback Don colorway. These retail for 120 bucks, and this color combination is definitely on point. You don't really see this in too many locations. There's been a lot of colorways to release. So when I've seen this colorway, I had to go ahead and grab them. They were on sale, and I'll try to put some links right underneath the video if you guys want a chance to pick up a pair of the Don Issue 5. They only retail for 120, which is definitely a bang for your buck. Give me your thoughts about the look of this shoe, and let's dive in a little bit more. Now let's talk about the traction. The traction on this shoe or the outsoles are definitely unique. As you see, they do have two pods on the forefoot and one on the back. I'm not sure if that's where some technology would be. And then they have like a heron bone for the rest of the outsole, which to me feels like this will be something great for the courts. Once again, I always say that these signature shoes are recommended for indoor use as opposed to outdoor use. They last a lot longer and you would get some more grip and, and traction if you use these on indoor courts. Especially as you look closely, it doesn't seem like there's too much meat on the bone. So I'm curious to see if you have to break these in on the court or will you have some traction and grip right off the rip? I know a dirty court, it seems like you might have to wipe a little bit because just it's like a flat surface and I'm not getting any feel that these will have some good grip right off, right off the bat off your first wear so if you have hooped in these before let us know if you had to break them in before you got some grip action or were they great right out the gate moving on to the midsole it does come with full light strike and as you can see there is some slight give when it comes to pressing on it then you have this cage right above it now one thing about the uppers even though we're talking about the midsole, the uppers have all this netting or all of this, you know, it looks like mesh, right? Most of the heat will release from the sock. The panels on the side, not so much. And the perforations on the toe box, doesn't seem like too much heat will escape your foot. So this might be one that holds on and retains a little heat. So you might want to consider wearing thinner socks as opposed to some of the thicker socks. So when you're playing for a couple hours, your feet won't be drenched in sweat. I thought this would have a lot more ventilation as you guys can see perforations on the toe box, on the medial side, and then you have that whole like mesh upper. But seeing reviews and seeing videos, the heat usually comes out from the upper part of the shoe where the mesh tongue is. Now they have a split tongue or a two piece tongue, which is different from most shoes. So that right there is where a lot of the ventilation will come through. And let me explain to you or show you what I'm talking about when I talk about when I mentioned the split tongue. If you guys can see like, the tongue is not attached fully. It's attached, let's see. it's attached more down here, closer to the forefoot, but this this tongue is just much different. It's like a two-piece tongue. And it's like a two-piece tongue. It doesn't strap in like this one kind of is attached to the material on the upper. But once you get to this side of the tongue, it splits. It opens up. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. So I feel like that's where a lot of the ventilation will come from along with this being a mesh tongue overall. But on the side panels, when you, um, like you don't feel no, it's like some fabric right there. So there's not a lot of breathability with the shoe. This is why I recommend wearing thinner socks so that way you can have a little bit more breathability when you wear them. But the aesthetics of the shoe is definitely on point. And I'm loving the cushion, man. That full life strike midsole. You have the shank plate, so there's not a lot of twerking from right to left. There is some flexibility in the forefoot of the shoe, but that shank plate really holds down the midfoot and keeps you really locked in and secure on that. The lacing system is interesting too, because it goes all the way up to the top, of course. Um, a lot of people don't like this medial size lace part right here. They wish it was more of an eyelid, but either way, you, do, you are locked down all the way to the top, as you guys can see the eyelid right there. Let me know if you guys are a fan of this shoe by the aesthetics. It does retail for 120, as I said. And to briefly take out the insoles, you guys can see that it is pretty thin. Not a lot of cushioning going there. However, it is very soft. You can see that it has the uh, Spider-Man logo on there for, of course, Don Issue, which is his logo to Spider-Man. There's an interesting graphic on here as well, too. But like I said, not a lot going on when it comes to the cushioning on the insole. Now, I'm not disappointed in the shoe. Overall, I do like the aesthetics of the shoe. The materials in the upper don't seem super high quality, but they are nice. This does have like a new buck overlay around the toe box for a TPU portion. And then you have these pods on the side of the shoe, which is more, it feels more like a plastic situation. I'm not mad at the shoe overall, though. You know, I'm impressed by it. I think by this having more of a sleek, low-cut feel, 
it definitely raised the value of the Don Issue series. Cause like I said before, the previous models to me, all of them were just not it. And I was wondering what was going on, but I feel like this shoe right here is a move in the right direction. Give me your thoughts and opinions on these. Of course, you guys are gonna see what they look like on feet. I tried them on in store and these were true to size. So that's definitely something good to know and consider the toe box is not too narrow. So I was able to go with a size 13 and I am a size 13. So like I said before, maybe try on the shoe before you leave to make sure it's the proper fit for you. But from my experience with a narrow foot, these were true to size. One thing that did kind of surprise me about this shoe is the fact that the Achilles area does not seem to have a lot of cushioning like you've seen on previous Don Issues, James Harden's, and a lot of Adidas basketball shoe. They seem to pay more attention to the uh, cushioning around the ankle and Achilles. And for me, that would have been ideal, but this seems to be pretty thin, which is unfortunate. You know, the cushioning around it is, is a little bit better, but the actual part with the pull tab doesn't really seem like there's too much cushion there. But overall, I'm, you know, rating this shoe from like a one to 10, I give it a solid eight and a half, nine. I really like the way it looks. Hooping in it, you might have to be adjusted to some of the features, the shank plate, the uh, materials on the toe box, the flex on it is a little bit different. I've heard different type of complaints once you bend it in. Some parts might feel like they poke your feet a little bit more. And one thing that is slightly disappointing, but it is dope with the aesthetics. I thought all these perforations were gonna give you a lot more breathability, but this overlay is, you know, this fabric is on top of another fabric. So it's kind of blocking the ventilation. That's why I say most of your ventilation will come from the tongue area. That's why I also recommend wearing thinner socks with these. But overall, the shoe looks nice. The colorways I've been seeing are impressive. I feel like it is truly an upgrade from the four, the three, the two, and the one. This Adidas Don Issue 5 kind of reminds me of the Harden Volume 7, if you will. Almost looking kind of similar, maybe more of a sleek look. Even the outsoles are kind of similar also with the two pods by the forefoot and also a pod on the back foot. You have the three stripes logo in certain areas. The uppers are kind of the same, almost. You know, you got more of a flat situation on the hard end, but the toe box even kind of feels like they're shaped the same. And as I was saying, you know, these hardens, the cushioning on here is not A1 like it used to be also, but this is arguably his best, you know, hooping shoe besides the eights that are coming out around the corner. But for some reason, these two shoes remind me a lot of each other. If you guys have tried the Harden Volume Sevens, let me know because these are actually some really good shoes. I would love to see the feedback so other people can know about them too. And then we're gonna get to these Don Issue Fives and see what's up with them. But for some reason, whenever I saw this, it reminded me a lot of the Harden Volume Seven. That's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys think about either one of these shoes in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite Don Issue sneaker is, of course, in the comments below. We're going to go ahead and get to some B-roll plus what the on-feet. And I'll see you guys back, in the next back, one. Back, Deuces. Back, back.